Hey guys, and welcome to the first of the bonus lessons for the XGen Beginner series. In these bonus lessons, we'll be covering kind of additional topics that you don't need to be a good groomer. Like, you really don't need these, but it's additional information that can kind of help you push your work a little bit further if you want to get a bit more technical, learn a little bit more. But again, you can do perfectly good grooms without the content in these bonus lessons. So the reason I'm doing them is just to push you a little bit further. However, if you struggle with them, do not worry. A lot of the topics, especially this first video, a lot of the topics can be out of your comfort zone. It may be something you've never done before. You know, ultimately, this lesson is going to be scripting, which is kind of a very basic level of programming. That's a completely different skill set from grooming. So do not worry if you struggle. But yeah, so I kind of gave it away there. In this lesson, we'll be covering kind of creating our first script, which will be the percentage affected expression that I used in the strays lesson and a little bit in the clumping lesson. It's one of the more simple and more helpful scripts that you can make. That isn't just one line. So we're just going to get straight into it. The scene setup is just a plane with a groom on it. There's no guides. It's just the attribute groom. So rather than using guides to drive it, it's got attributes. And we're just going to create a basic strays noise. So I'm going to go into modifiers and click add noise go. So making our expression, how do we start? Well, the easiest way to start, and well, the first thing you have to do is pick which one you're going to use this in. So since I want to do a mask to say what, what is a stray and what isn't a stray, I'm just going to go to the mask and click on this expression symbol. And you'll see that in here is the value one a big white square and this value one is the same as what we see here so when you type an expression in this expression window you ultimately you're typing it here but obviously having an expression window makes things a lot easier for you if you wanted to load an expression that's already been made you can just go to the drop down menu next to that load expression and then for you these probably won't be here you just have to go into load other find the folder that i gave you guys in the tutorial and you can get the one that we're going to make right here percentage affected you can also get stuff for noise magnitude, noise magnitude with maps, guide color stuff, generic magnitude, C length. It's, there's a lot of like little things in there that I, I find helpful day to day. So let's start making. So first off, we need to kind of understand the action expression and what we're looking at. So here in the top left is possibly the most important thing because it will help you debug what you do. This is a preview of whatever your expression is making. So ultimately when we make an expression we're making a texture. So you see how the value of 1 is typed here. If I change that to a value of 0 0.5 and hit apply, this now becomes grey. And also our hair got half the amount of noise. If I set this to 0 0.2 we'll see that this gets darker and the hair gets even less noise. So what we type in here is just being used directly in the mask. And this is a preview for it, so that's incredibly helpful. It has a min and a max. That is just for the preview. So if you have the set to one, but the max set to two, it doesn't change the value in the groom. It just changes the preview value. So this is only really helpful if you're doing values above zero and one, which although we technically are, we don't really need to preview values higher than one. So I'm just gonna set that back to one. So to get started, we need to understand the process of making a strays mask. And the general process here is that we want to randomly pick hairs based on a percentage. So if we want to say, oh, 10% of hairs, then we need to find 10% of a noise. So first off, we need to get, okay, how are we gonna do the randomness? So simply put, we can just put rand, open bracket, close, and then put zero comma one, close bracket, hit apply. And our mask is now randomized from zero to one. Our hairs have different effects. And up here in the preview, we have a really kind of aggressive, like kind of old TV static noise. And that's just because every possible position is randomized. So this is the start. What we need to be able to do now is say, okay, we want to pick a percentage of that. And this is, is pretty basic maths. However, it's still kind of, you can understand it visually, but what we can do is say, if we want half of this, we can say, okay, pick whatever is less than 0.5, because we know that all these values are zero to one. So if we do a less than symbol and then put 0 0.5, 
then just put a little question mark because we're asking a question now. We're saying if this is lower than this, give us, let's say one. And then if it's not, put a colon and then zero. So what this will do is randomly make a noise, ask with the question mark, if this is lower than, you see how we got the less than symbol, 0 0.5. If it is, then we get this first number. And if it isn't, we get this second number. Hit apply. And we can now see that the preview up here is pure black and white now. And down here, we got half of our hairs affected, half of them not affected. So we can change this to 0 0.1. And now we'll get about 10% of hairs being affected. Now this is great. This is technically already working as the mask. This is ultimately what we're gonna do. However, it's not overly friendly and it's going to have a pretty major issue in animation, which is it will flicker, but we'll address these one at a time. So what we need to do now is start making variables for the user to use. And we also need to make sure that this rand doesn't flicker. So I think this will be the best introduction. So all we're going to do is hit enter, just push this down the line or two. And what I want to do is declare this as a variable. So what that means is each hair will store a number. The hair will remember what the number is. And that's important because this currently would be generated every frame, which means that when your character's moving, the strays will change. It will kind of flicker and look super weird. So the best thing to do is to declare this. And the way we can do that is put a dollar a dollar sign is basically saying to action, okay, remember this, this, you know, keep whatever I put in here and store it on the hair. So we can just call this whatever you want. There's a bunch of existing ones we can use, but we want to make our own. So we're just going to put dollar rand value. Okay. And then what we can do is say it is equal to rand zero to one. And then at the end of that, we just need to put a semicolon. And what that will do currently is nothing. All it will do is store this value, but we're not using it. So what I need to do now is use this. And the way I use this is I can go down here onto this line, type dollar, start typing rand value. One second, let me just close this, reopen it. dollar rand value. There we go. Sometimes you have to close the window to update it. So you'll see how it is case sensitive. If I just put a lowercase r, it won't find it. So you need to make sure it is uh, exactly what you put. So we have dollar rand value just here. Now if I hit apply again, it's now working. If we were to change this, the results up here would change because we are creating it and then we're using it. So I can just set this now to go up to two. Obviously this doesn't make much sense in terms of what we're using it for, but you can see how the results change. So this is now being used here. So I'm going to set that back to one. And now we need to make a control for the user to kind of change the percentage. So the percentage we're going to store as a variable again. So we're just going to enter that lower. Make sure you hit enter and not shift enter. If you notice just on here, if I press shift enter, it creates a blank line. That's not what we want in this case. So hitting enter will create a new line and you need to make sure whenever you make a variable, it's on its own line. So hitting enter is the correct way to do that. So we need a percentage. So I'm just going to create a variable called percentage. And then we're just going to say it is equal to 50. And hit apply. So you'll see that now we have this slider. However, it still says mask. And it's also a bit of a useless slider. We've got the same slider just here, but this slider goes from zero to one, which isn't overly visually handy. Um, generally, if you're thinking of it as a percentage, you're gonna want it to be from zero, uh, zero to 100. So this slider can actually be altered. And the way we do that is we just put a little hash and then we say what we want it to go to and from. So I'm gonna say zero to 100 and hit apply on that. So now we have a slider that can be moved. Now you'll notice it still says mask here, that's fine. When you only have one slider in your whole expression, it will just use the default name of whatever attribute you're driving. So I'm using the mask, so it will keep that name. 
However, when we start adding more controls, this name will be kind of replaced with percentage and whatever else we add. So how do we use this now? Well, all we have to do is go down here. And I'm just gonna hit apply and accept and go back into it just to avoid it not finding what we want. So I'm just gonna type dollar percentage. And there we go, it's right there. Hit apply on that. And you'll notice this immediately goes white. And this is quite simple, the reason why. We are generating a random value from zero to one. And then we're checking if it's less than one, which all, all of it is less than one. If I set this higher, then it's obviously still less than 43. If I set it to zero, then this would go black. So it's a bit kind of useless right now. It's just on or off with zero to one. So what we have to do is get this percentage and divide it just using a forward slash by 100. So what we're doing now is we get this 0 to 100 and then divide it by 100. So it's now 0 to 1 again. And the reason we do that rather than just have this go 0 to 1 is just because we're calling it a percentage. Having it go 0 to 1 visually makes a little bit less sense. Although you could just set this to go 0 to 1 and then get rid of this divide by 100. But I find this reads a lot more visually easily. But you'll immediately notice up at the top here, as we move this percentage slider, we're getting more or less masked. So this already is going to work the way we want it to. This is already a functional mask. We set it to 100, we set it to zero, do whatever we want. I'm gonna make that noise a lot stronger. Let's go to 10. Maybe not 10, that's a little bit much. There we go. Two works just fine. So there was one extra control that we had and that extra control was the seed value. And the seed values allowed us to change what value was used here. So the way we do that is there's a hidden feature of the RAND and that is people know that it goes, you know, RAND minimum value, comma, maximum value. And that works just fine. However, if you add another comma and put a number there, that is now the seed. So if I hit apply, that now like changes what has been chosen. If I hit two in here, it's a different noise. So I'm going to hit enter again. And now we've got different thing chosen. So we know that we want to be able to control this value. So we need a seed. And what I'm going to do is create a new variable and I'm going to call it percentage seed. And then for this one, I'm just going to say the, the default seed is one semicolon just to call it a new thing and then we want a slider that isn't zero to one so i'm going to hash then i'm going to go zero to 20. we don't need more than 20 seeds that would be a bit excessive hit apply on that and you'll now notice even though we're not using this yet we now have proper sliders it says mask which is then empty we just have the expression sign here and then we have percentage and percentage seed percentage seed is still doing nothing though because we haven't put it anywhere so all we need to do is go to where this two is, where the seed is, and type percentage seed. Let's put that right there. Apply. And now, let's open that again. When I change the seed, we're getting a different noise. And obviously, if we're getting a different noise here, and then we check if it's less than percentage, we're going to get a different result every time. So this just allows us to get kind of infinite variations without changing the overall look. So I'm just going to hit apply on that, hit accept. And then here we go. We have a working percentage affected. We have a kind of percentage seed, which allows us to change what values you're using. You can rename this to whatever you want. Just make sure that if you do rename it here, that you also rename it wherever it's being used. So in the next video, we'll be going over how to use maps in this, not specifically this one, but like just how to use maps and expressions, because that is also incredibly helpful. But this, again, I cannot stress this enough. This is quite a complex topic. This expression specifically is relatively simple. Um, it, it does quite a lot though, it is very helpful. You can get much more complex expressions. So if I just go to magnitude and load one of the ones I've already made, let's go to load other, just so you guys can see what I'm picking. I'm just gonna go noise magnitude. And this one has a lot more features. This one also has a percentage stray. So I've built a lot more into this, but you can see how expressions can very quickly roll out and get a lot more complex, but the more complex these expressions are, the more controls you have. So this 
if I set this back to 100, this noise magnitude, I've added an on off switch just so I don't have to go up here and click. It's a very lazy step, but I find sometimes some of the laziest little expressions are the, the ones that you like the most. So rather than clicking this checkbox, I can just turn it on and off here. I've added a percentage stray. I've got the stray seed, which is what we were just going through. Then I've got a minimum and maximum magnitude for the strays and a minimum and maximum magnitude for the non strays. Personally, I don't use this script very often anymore. I prefer to have a separate noise for my strays, but you can see how expressions can do a lot. So let's just quickly show you one more. I'm going to go to my primitives. I'm going to set you to use guides and I'm just going to add a bunch of guides. I'm also going to hide this. So one of the other ones that I've added that's quite helpful, and you guys can use this as much as you want. If you go into the primitives and output tab, we have a guide color just here. And what that guide color does, so I'm just gonna stop the hair from showing, this guide color changes the color of our guides, obviously. I've created an expression that you can use that will, it's called guide call, and that will randomize the color of each guide. It won't use green, or it will use green not as much, so that when you select a guide, it's still visible. It doesn't blend in with others. So these expressions can be used for a lot of stuff. You can use them anywhere, basically everywhere except from region maps, because region maps, for whatever reason, doesn't have an expression editor. Uh, but there are workarounds for that. But yeah, so I hope this kind of shows you kind of the helpfulness of expressions. And again, I just really want to stress this. If you don't understand it, that's completely fine. I've included all of the expressions that I've made specifically for the people who don't understand it and also people who just don't want to type it. It's a bit cumbersome, but I hope you've enjoyed the session. And in the next session, we'll be talking about how we use maps and expressions combined just to get like the most possible control. For now though, hope you enjoyed the rest of your day and have a good one. Bye guys.